So I'm playing a game of AoE 3 The Definitive Edition with my brother and two friends. We're playing on the Punjab map. And uh, we had a game where the post game recorded that I had only one of my units killed. And we're trying to decide if this is actually what took place. Because I recorded the game, so we're going to find out if I actually only lost one unit in the game. Here's a snapshot of the post game. It says only one unit killed. Lord Von Stauffenberg, one of the guys I play with a lot, uh, he's real big about building walls around his entire town. Here he's built it around his ally as well. That's very typical for him. He loves to fight by the walls, or he's really a lot, he's a lot harder to beat in a fight if he's by his walls. I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't even build walls usually myself. I did in this game though, and as soon as the treaty ended, I built the Sufi Mosque trading post so I can get elephants. They're great damage absorbers, which is probably one of the reasons I only lost one unit in this game, which I think I did. But we're going to see it and uh, find out what really happened in the fight. It wasn't a very long game. So I'm going to switch over to Lord Von Stauffenberg's perspective so I can really get a good eye on this battle to see what really took place. I do lose an elephant right here, so that's one. It's strange to watch your own army come out of the fog of war from someone else's recorded game perspective. I think I'm going to do the upgrade from the churches more when you increase the visibility from your buildings and from your units where you can see farther. I think that's a good upgrade to have. So I lose another elephant right here, actually, but it still only recorded one death in my game. Does it not count native allies as units? It's very strange. That's the only deaths I've seen, though, so I don't, I don't know any other reason. You know, I lost a soldier right here to one of his Karasers, I think. So I think it doesn't record the native allies that you kill. Yeah, I lose, a little, I lose a guy right here. Anyway, this game was over with pretty pretty soon after this. They just didn't have a good, a good force ready when the treaty ended, that's all. The next game, though, is uh, went on for a long time. So in the last game we played that night, I played the Sioux with Lord von Stauffenberg as an ally. And Lord von Steiger and my brother as as opponents. And this game went on for a really long time. This this was crazy. It was there was so much back and forth. But I'm gonna I'm gonna chop it down for you so it's not a long video. Yeah, with the Sioux, you can gather a lot of meat, man. That's kind of what I did in this game. I had I had so many animals together. I just had tons and tons of food. 
I fatten up the uh, sheep that I gather, and I just send them to my ally. I don't even, I don't even use them myself. But in a long drawn out game, you can really run out of food this way if you only have one or two farms, and the others have a lot more. Oh, it's not the Sioux anyway. It's the Lakota. This is like the new version, and there's a lot of politically correct things in the definitive edition. But this is my non-politics channel, so I'm not going to get into it. But But like the Sioux in the new version, you have to uh, bake trading posts near the gold and mine it. You don't just like mine the gold directly. It's kind of weird. Here's my ally starting point. Here's my uh, my brother opponent's starting point. He's Portuguese, so he's got multiple town centers and everything. He's dangerous with the Portuguese. He uh, makes lots of he'll make lots of organ guns. I already know that much. Here's Lord von Steigler playing the Germans. He likes the Germans. He likes the little doppel snowgers, whatever the guys with the Zweihander swords. They're really good against horses. Those little, uh, those special villagers that the Germans have, actually, if you can keep them alive through the whole game, there's a limited amount of them you can have, but if you go the whole game without them dying, like, they gather a lot of resources. I've, I've played the Germans and they, those, those settler wagon things, they gather a lot, they gather a lot faster than regular villagers. Definitely my favorite change in the new version is when you tame human treasure guardians, they actually are good units. They're not just used against treasure guardians. They're good in the fight. They have statistics, you know. Like, this is the outlaw rider. You got two pistols here. He rides on a horse. Now I'm taming a, a standing treasure guardian. Outlaw rifleman. So they just join the fight, and they're just like, they're good units, actually. So I built a forward base near this pond, and I had it for most of the game. Put little teepees around it to enhance my hit points. And my attack if I have the right cards. So I took this mantlet village right in the backyard of Lord Von Steigler. He didn't notice for a long time, and back in my post, I built a native trade embassy. You have to build this with a hero now. In the Definitive Edition, your explorer has to uh, build a native embassy. That way those mantlets can just jump right out of the native embassy, and Lord Von Steigler doesn't see him actually passing in front of his town. It was kind of cool for a while, but he noticed it eventually. So it's almost time to start fighting, and Stauffenberg has his army ready. Here's my brother's force. He's got a lot of organ guns, just like I thought he would. And up north, uh, Lord von Steiger, he's got he's got his little force ready. And in a minute, I'll move down south to join my ally. Uh oh, the first contact with the enemy. The villagers are in the way. Uh -huh. so many cannons in this game it's it's almost uncountable So now the first big push on Rai of Darkens Town. I like to capture those native trade posts and get more native allies. That's kind of my obsession in this game.
And here's where the game went a little sour for me and my ally. Von Steiger was sending help to his ally. And I sent some of my horsemen up to my forward base, where I thought he was headed, to try and defend my forward base. I could make native allies from there really quickly with the Black Arrow card. So I sent my horsemen up there to defend my forward base. Figured I would just, you know, defend my base. My ally sees me moving and decides to join me. Decides to take initiative and be quick on the draw and breaks off his destruction of uh, Ryab Darkens Town. Decides to come join me, but he can't move very fast because of his, because of his cannons. And so my, my cavalry end up at the forward base. And I'm not sure where Von Steiger is. Von Steiger's relief force is. I have no idea where it is. I'm looking around for it. And uh, I get confused about where his location is. It turns out he's not actually heading to my forward base. He's actually heading straight towards his ally. So Von Steiger is fighting my ally, and I don't have my cannon killers handy. I have some infantry and some antlets, but I don't really have a way of eliminating his cannons very quickly. And so this becomes a slugfest, and it just it just slows the game down. We're not able to wipe out Riot Darken. I think we could have finished the game really, really quickly if I hadn't scattered off, broke off, and tried to defend my base. See, I'm still, I'm still thinking. I haven't realized that he's fighting my ally yet. I think I do just at that moment. I didn't realize he's fighting my ally. Then I start moving south. But uh, by then, it's the Von Steigler managed to slow the game down. He managed to basically. And here's, here's, here's Ryan Dark, and he's got an army up there again. He manages to come out and slow the game down some more. And the thing about um, Ryan Dark is you can't let him play too long. He'll get, he'll get such a large amount of resources. He'll just get. His resources will just be in stacks if you let him play too long. It's, it's, it gets ridiculous. And he'll just be able to keep flooding out troops. So you have to wipe him out early. And uh, we didn't do that quick enough. And I, my weakness is a long game. If I've been playing too long, I run out of resources. Because I don't make enough villagers. I make about 40, 41. And that's, that's on a good day. I just, I don't know. I just don't like making 100 villagers. I like the idea of quite possibly having an army of 120 soldiers. Or 140 soldiers or something like that. I like the possibility of that. So I... I don't make it quite enough villagers for a really long game. And so here I get desperate. I want to finish him off, and I just attack his town. I'm just going to go knock his town down with mainly cavalry. What's happening? Can I leave the field for a minute? What's he doing there? How can a man go forward with the cavalry without infantry support? What's the matter with you? <laughs> Von Steiger sends more help, and that attack is a bust. Von Steigler has really good uh, cavalry killers in this game, and it uh, it actually had a, a big impact on the game. His his anti-cavalry infantry and those pikemen and those doppelsnoggers.
Get those cannons, that's your job. Go and do it. Here my ally begins to move forward. I think he intends to raid Von Steigler's town. But as he's uh, marching up, and I, I actually join him, but uh, as he's marching up, he notices one of Von Steigler's support bases near Rye of Darkens Town. And he decides to, like, tear that down. And I turn on my, uh, my siege damage buff from my dancing circle, and uh, I just join him, and we actually manage to tear a bunch of stuff down. I make a series of serious mistakes. The defender starts to attack my invaders again, and instead of attacking his soldiers, I decided to continue destroying buildings. Even though he's got cannons over there that need to be dealt with, I decide to finish off his tower before I engage him. You know, I figure, you know, these towers will be out of the way once I bring in reinforcements or when, uh, once my ally brings in more troops, but, you know, there's Von Steigler again, helping. And, uh, that sort of takes Jason out of the fighting for a moment, and I got reinforcements, but I, I don't know, I, did, I continue to bash this tower down. And I should have just, to me, I was trying to finish it off so it would be out of the way, but by then most of my guys are dead and his cannons are still in the game. This was, a, this was a big miscalculation. I should have just immediately attacked his soldiers, or immediately ran over to help my ally fight off uh, Von Steigler. So that was a major error, that, because uh, I was enjoying bashing the buildings down too much. My brother brings out Colvarians at just the right moment. Terrible, terrible. Those are the anti-cannon cannons. Messes like this happen when you have soldiers on the way to a fight that you thought you were winning and they show up to a terrible situation. It's really hard to avoid in this game. This support base of Von Steigler's, I didn't even know was here for the entire game. Never actually located this during the game. I saw it and once I started watching the footage later on, I discovered it.
And that base is probably why Von Steigler's assistance became so consistent. Whenever Rave Darken was in trouble, Von Steiger always seemed to show up with a, a force. Finally, my ally gets pushed back to his walls, which he's really good at defending, and he holds there for a very long time. At this point, Von Steigler attacks my, my forward base. Has lots of cannons with him. Even though I use my bone pipe armor upgrade from the corral to destroy enemy cannons really quickly, he just keeps making them, keeps having cannons with his troops. And here I didn't notice it right away. The cannons are off in his fog of war. So I charge him, I didn't notice the cannons were there, and this caused me to get mauled up really bad, and ultimately, my base falls. Not long after, he's attacking my starting point, and I don't have a lot of troops ready to defend, and my hometown just crumbles. So while Von Steigler is focusing on me, my ally launches these attacks against my brother, but my brother has a stable economy and he can just send troops out and just meet him on the field and this is only going to result in a stalemate. And I was down to the point where I only had a few villagers left and all I can do is try to rebuild. So I'm trying to rebuild while Von Steigler is attacking my ally's town ransacking his farmlands, and I'm flaring it, but my, my ally is so busy fighting my brother, he's not noticing uh, Von Steiger in the middle of his town attacking stuff, and I can't do anything about it right away. Yeah, since he's not hearing the alarm bells properly because he's already fighting, they become sort of redundant, and he doesn't actually check on what's causing the alarm. So I just have to rebuild slowly and try to get Von Steiger out of my ally's town, and Send a few guys over, or at least try to slow him down until Von Steigler sees what's happening. But I'm the, I was the weak link, I was the one that collapsed and allowed him to come in the back, really. My whole town's gone. But uh, at this point, we're in big trouble. I decided to do hit and run attacks. He's got his doppel soldiers. No, I'm gonna run. Those swords are just too effective against cavalry. So I've been actually working on my Sioux deck since I played this game and lost. One thing I'm going to add to my deck is the Counting Coup card. This allows the uh, Lakota War Chief to go up and do an area attack. And he can knock out like two or three cannons like really, really fast. And he's got bonuses against artillery just like the regular cavalry do. There's my ally. He's actually coming in now to, to fight off the people in his town. But we basically lost at this point. You know, I'm, I got some. I actually got some reasonable amount of troops back in it finally. But I mean, Von Steigler did enough damage, caused enough chaos. Basically, we're, we're collapsing. But I, my uh, Lakota deck is a lot better. I've added some of the support cards that send units, and they uh, upgrade stuff. So I, I got a really powerful deck with this this sieve now. It's a lot better than the deck that I had in this game. So here's my brother. He's showing up to finish off the game, and it's basically over. But it was it was a hell of a game. It lasted a long time. Thanks for watching.